black and swarthy. We're gonna juxtapose those two, see what the sources have to say about pitting those against each other, right? So here's a source by Eli Meeker, right? Sermons on philosophical and evangelical uh, practical subjects from 1830, pages 37 and 38, right? So let's look. As the Jews have inhabited every climate that is not extremely cold, so have they, so they have changed their complexion in every case and acquired some likeness and color forming features to the people among whom they have for a long time lived. So basically saying the Jews mostly look like the people they live amongst, right? So let's look at the bottom right here. It is not proper to divide them into two classes of white Jews and black Jews. They are dispersed through every country in the world and have four differences of complexion. The fair, the swarthy, the olive, and black. You see these two are not the same. Even if swarthy in a dictionary can uh, apply to black people in certain cases, in this case or in these cases, when they're calling pe these people swarthy, doesn't seem to be the same as when they call them black. These are differences of complexion. Fair, swarthy, olive, and black. In whatever region they are found, they are marked with the peculiar color of the natives. So they're the same color of the natives there, right? So when they call them swarthy, that's not the same as calling them black as a Negro or African. The Jews who live in Britain and Germany and who are the descendants of past generations in the same nations have an intermixture of a fair and ruddy complexion, nearly resembling that of the English and Germans. Those of Spain and Portugal are swarthy, but little varied from the features of the Spaniards and Portuguese. So even if these people are brownish or whatever, they're little varied from the actual features of the Spanish. They're no different than them, right? In India, they are said to be black. However, they are not the blackness of the African countenance, although they are peculiar, peculiar, uh, they're dark. I'm not gonna get beat up about words today. So in the four differences of complexion, swarthy and black are distinguished from each other. Also notice that swarthy Jews are little varied from the features of the regular Spaniards and Portuguese as seen in images that we share. Here go one. You can call these swarthy. Look at their features. No different than the Spanish or the Portuguese, Iberians. Look at them, right? Look at the images. So even if you could call this swarthy, this is not African, this is, these are not people. It's an earlier version of the same book from three years earlier, 1827, right? Those of Spain and Portugal are swarthy, but little varied from the complexion of the Spaniards and Portuguese. So the earlier 1827 edition, again distinguishes black and swarthy and says Sephardic swarthiness is little varied from the complexion of the regular uh, Spanish and Portuguese. Don't go to this book, page 224, that George Lewis um, Lip Clerk, Natural History of Animals, right? What he says, the Spaniards are meager and though rather short, they are, the Spaniards are meager and though rather short, they yet are shapely. They are indeed yellow and swarthy. The complexion of the Spaniards is different little from the Sephardim. They're called yellow and swarthy. <coughs> let's look at this, uh, let's look at this source. Page 414, modern part of a universal history from the earliest accounts of time, 1760. What they say here? Right? Look what they say here. We are informed likewise that John of Portugal sold for slaves all those Jews who refused to embrace Christianity. And that ordering their children to be baptized, they were transported thither from whom are descended the present race of inhabitants. You're talking about the Jews in, uh, in Africa, Sail Tome, who are a kind of mixed descent between the swarthiness and atra bilious temperament of the Jews and the more sanguine plethoric habit and jet black complexion of the Negroes. So they're a mix between the swarthy Jews and the jet black complexion of the Negroes. Swarthy Jews and jet black Negroes are juxtaposed. They're not the same. That's what I'm saying. 
and these sources seem to support it. I'm going to go to a text that they like to use. A tribute for the Negro, uh, Wilson, Wilson, Armistead, 1848, pages 58 and 64. See right here. If we observe the gradations of color in different lo uh, localities in the meridian, right? Under the equa equator, under the equator, we have the deep black of the Negro, then the copper or olive of the Moors of Northern Africa, then the Spaniard and Italian, swarthy compared with other Europeans. So we already know that the their source is saying that the regular Spaniard and Portuguese are swarthy, similar to the Jews. They're very, they're very um, uh, similar, little varied, little change, right? And we see when they talk about the Spaniard and Italian, they're called swarthy compared with other Europeans. And that's not the same as when they say the deep black of the Negro up here. Under the equator, we have the deep black of the Negro and the copper or olive of the Moors in North Africa. Then the Spaniard and Italian, swarthy compared with other Europeans, right? They're not used the same. Let's go to 64, page 64, right? Talking about the Jews up here. The Jews, however, slightly their features may have assimilated to those of other nations, descended from one stock and prohibited by the most sacred inst institutions from intermarrying with the people, yet dispersed according to the divine prediction into every country, right? You see uh, fair in Britain and Germany, brown in France and in Turkey, swarthy in Portugal and in Spain, olive in Syria and in Chaldea, tawny or copper colored in Arabia and in Egypt, whilst they are black at Congo in Africa. So we see the Iberian Jews are swarthy. They're using it different than they're saying black as people in the Congo in Africa. Black is the, uh, the Jews that they found in the Congo, maybe the Luangos or whoever. These are not the same as a distinction between the swarthy Iberian Jews and black Jews in the Congo, man. He go a source from Thomas Winterbottom, 1803, an account of the native Africans in the neighborhood of Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. Page 187, and we're going to go again. They're talking about the Jews again, same manner. Thus, they are fair in Britain and Germany, brown in France and in Turkey, swarthy in Portugal and Spain, olive in Syria and Chaldea, tawny or copper colored in Arabia and Egypt, and nearly black in Abyssinia. So again, now we see them contrasted with the Abyssinians or the Ethiopians. They're swarthy in Portugal, but over in uh, Ethiopia, they're nearly black, or you could just say black people. So there's another contrast. So first we've seen Congo, now we see Ethiopians, their skin color being contrasted with the swarthiness of Sephardic Jews. So here's another one, a collection of voyages and travels, 1704, right? Going through this text, and we're going to John Nihoff's uh, source. This particular source was based on the 17th century tra travels of uh, John Nihoff's. It was published later. And we see here, he talk about the Isle of St. Tome. See the year 1643 right there. But let's go to it, right? Okay, so let's see what the source says. See 1643 underlined right here, right? Certain it is that among 100 foreigners, scarce 10 escape with life and those seldom live till 50 years of age. Though some of the inhabitants, as likewise the Negroes, so we see inhabitants and Negroes distinguished, inhabitants as likewise the Negroes, who are all here, live to a great age. Its first inhabitants were Jews, banished out of Portugal. They, the Jews, are of a very odd complexion. Among the mountains dwells abundance of Negroes who are run away from the Portuguese, right? So we see, again, they mention in the Jews as inhabitants and Negroes separately. They're not calling these people Negroes. They're saying they got an odd complexion, probably talking about their swarthiness, or it could be talking about mixed Jews that came over and got kicked out with them. The inhabitants are distinguished from the Negroes. The Jews are described here as the first inhabitants. They have an odd complexion. While not explicitly called non-black, they are not Negro either. Negroes are mentioned separately here. The Jews in Sao Tome are documented as having fathered mulattoes. That's in other sources, right? So that's talked about. 
hey, I just want to throw in a few more sources before this video is up so I can get up out of here. This one is Teika um, Maui or New Zealand and its inhabitants by Richard Taylor, 1870. And now we're here at page 72 of this text and we're going to read towards the bottom. It says, the English and German Jews are many shades lighter than the Spanish and Portuguese. Those are the Iberian Jews. And they, in turn, are much lighter than those of Morocco. And yet, they have all preserved the characteristic features of their race. So, this actually shows you that even though Jews in Germany and England are lighter than the Iberian Jews, they are lighter than what you would find in Morocco. And here's a few pictures of Moroccan Jews relevant to the time period. Their source, I believe, is 1870s, and these was from the 1800s. So there you have it. Next source is The Jewish Body, A History by Robert Jute. Okay, so I own the digital edition of this book, so it's either 57 or 58. Let's just say 57 to 58 of this book in the digital edition of this book. And we're going to read this quote um, relevant to the ideas and the rumors of the skin color of the Jews, especially pertaining to the Middle Ages. So I'm going to read the quote. That view, however, is countered in Zettler's Universal Lexicon of 1749 where we read that the skin color of the Jews, which from the waning of the Middle Ages onward was usually described as dark, was nevertheless not black. So again, we see evidence of um, basically a uh, juxtaposition of the darkness of the Jews who aren't even necessarily um, uh, Sephardic Jews all the time. Uh, and the blackness of actual Negroes. Sometimes in history, this was actually used to denigrate Jews by uh, comparison. And my final source here is the American Hebrew, volume 119, issue 14. And so you go to page 389 of this source, and eventually it gets cut off, but it picks back up and ends on page 404. So just to let you know. But this source in particular speaks about a Sephardic Jew in Amsterdam or from Amsterdam and it describes him as swarthy and it gives us a little bit more about him, his history and his people. Let's just take a brief look. Okay, it says his ancestors came here 327 years ago. Now this article was from 1926 so that would mean that his ancestors immigrated to Amsterdam around 1599. It says, they were sugar factors from Portugal, secret Jews who for three generations had called themselves Christians and outwardly had conducted themselves as such. They had come rich in worldly goods and richer still in Iberian pride. They had brought with them their jewels and crested plate their Negro slaves and Circassian concubines. So we see a descendant of Jews in Amsterdam who is described as swarthy in this article. And he has Negro slaves that his family brought with them when they left Iberia. That is a juxtaposition from a swarthy person who actually owned Negro slaves as far as his family was concerned. And the article also features an image of uh, the synagogue or life in Amsterdam for Sephardic Jews. It says, Sephardic synagogue at Amsterdam showing its position on Canal. This is one of the most famous synagogues in Europe. It was built by Spanish Jews who found refuge in Holland after the terrible persecutions in Spain. And its congregation, uh, it had 898 male members. So this is an image uh, included in the article. So these are the people who fled Iberia when they came to Amsterdam. Some of them uh, brought their slaves with them, actual Negroes, and they themselves, up until the 20th century, were still called swarthy and dark. I find that very, very, very interesting. Very much indeed. 
and they're gonna include an image I'm gonna show right here from the article um, right here this is a portrait of a rabbi by Rembrandt now in the Berlin Museum it says Dignity, dignity and scholarship were outstanding characteristics of the Moranos who remained in Spain after banishment of the Jews in 1492 many of the Iberian Jews of that generation like the famous Manasseh ben Israel migrated to Holland Others voyaged to Brazil for centuries. The Jews of Holland have been distinguished for what it says, probability and civic pride. Right? So there we have it. This is an image of some of the kind of people who would have probably been described as swarthy and owned and mixed and made it with slaves. Um, I think a good article uh, that talks about the... Uh, relationships between blacks and Sephardic Jews in Amsterdam would be from uh, a black Sephardic Jew today uh, Demota I'm going to see if I can link his article and here is Demata's source the final source African blacks and mulattoes in the 17th century Amsterdam Portuguese Jewish community by Yehonatan Alazar Demata December 2019 and this is perfect with the previous source because the, the, the fella, the guy, his family immigrated around 1599. So that's right on time for the 1600s, which is the 17th century in Amsterdam, right? And we read, it says, the 17th century Portuguese Jewish community in Amsterdam was comprised of members coming from Spain, Portugal, Italy, Turkey, Greece, France, Belgium, Morocco, and West Africa. And, um... To note, the population that was coming from West Africa wasn't just slaves. It was Sephardic Jews who were in Cape Verde, Sao Tome. Some of them were in Senegal. These were Iberian men who are noted in sources from people like John Barbeau and others that made actual mulatto descendants or lanzado descendants between black men and uh, these swarthy Iberian European men. So they would go back and forth from Africa to Amsterdam and sometimes to places like uh, Angola and Brazil, right? So it says the archival records reveal the reality of slave trade. Portuguese conversos, coerced Jewish converts to Catholicism, had been slave trading since 16th century between Lisbon, Lisbon, Sevilla, the Atlantic Islands, and West Africa. They even managed to control the assentos, the contracts, uh, between 1580 and 1640, the most prominent slave traders were from the families Rodriguez, Jimenez, uh, Norona, Mendez, and you guys see the rest. Basically, this article talks about the mixing and the mingling between the Sephardic Jews and their African slaves and Africans who came from West Africa or they came from Portugal with them because they were Africans actually living in Portugal that were slaves to Sephardic Jews and regular Portuguese. And they came with them and they mixed with them. And, and some of those African people actually, um, they actually converted to Judaism. So that history is there. So um, I want to thank everybody who watched. And hopefully people got edified and educated by the sources and the information brought out. I want to say peace and love to all of y'all. And take care.